Finally, <coughs> I'd like to call to order the regular board meeting of the Felicitas Water District. And I think I will lead the pledge. Well, last time. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Perfect. Roll call, Diane. This is Diane. Director Elithar? Here. Director Evans? Here. Director Martin? Present. Director Sinella? Here. Director Hernandez? Here. Thank you. Entertain a motion to uh, approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. Public notice. I happen to have a, if you can believe it, a re request from Mr. Mike Huntsinger. Public comment. Public comment. Not public notice. It says notice to the public. Oh, you're supposed to read that. No. Oh. Mike Hunsaker, 115 Equestrian Court, San Marcos. The Bureau of Reclamation has good out, put out a 24-month projection. It says there's a 56% chance that Lake Mead will be below 1,075 1, feet at the end of the year, which triggers an international uh, drought response. I've looked at the figures and I believe that they understate the probability as the uh, projections were based on data from 19, no, 1880 to 2000, I think 16, 17. Uh, if you include the very, very wet years in the projection, it's biased against the drought. The uh, same report notes we are in the worst drought since in the last 1,200 years. Uh, if you start restricting the data down to just the beginning of the drought, which uh, they consider to be started in 1999, you could get up to 80%. And after that, uh, sometime in the summer of 2020, uh, we have to go to another stage target trigger level, and even more drastic changes are required. There is a new draft plan for contingency statements. What's happened is they've been draining Lake Powell to keep Lake Mead up to levels that uh, forego and uh, do not trigger these uh, reductions. But they've overdrawn Lake Powell and are considering considerably doing more. And the new change uh, puts Lake Powell as the triggers, and they're going to let uh, Lake Mead go down. This means since 75% of the whole county's water comes from the Colorado River, a profound challenge. As a matter of fact, it's a greater crisis than the so-called housing crisis. We need to address that. And it also has another probable ending. Lake Powell and Lake Mead produce most of our sustainable energy for Southern California. If we lose uh, the Colorado River and that power, we're in deep trouble. Thank you. Thank you. Entertain a motion to approve the consent calendar. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to the action items. Action item 2.1, Emerald Heights. Thank you, President Hernandez, members of the board, good evening. Ah, there we go. Okay, uh, what I have for you here is to present uh, basically the results of our Emerald Heights Homeowners Association discussion here that we've had uh, over the last board meeting. Uh, we've had some additional correspondence there. We've done some additional field work. And I think uh, at this point here, we have just about all the items resolved here. Uh, pending one here, which is actually item one, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to save that one for last. I'm going to start with the other items here because I think those ones are much more straightforward. 
So I'm going to start with item two, uh, which is the road maintenance responsibilities. And on that there, so uh, in the board packet here, uh, this is the looped road that goes uh, from one side of Woodland Heights Glen to the other side. Uh, it's shown in your, your board packet here is that red uh, easement. So the cost for... Yeah, do excuse me, have, Rob. Do we have something for the screen so everyone can join in? Ah, well, something's coming up. That's close. Go ahead and bring this up. Go to the board packets. this back okay yeah no I won't be able to access it from here Half a million dollars. <laughs> four screens no waiting okay well, I'll just can kind of continue here on the discussion about that yeah uh, so Emerald Heights uh, HOA they received a uh, an updated quote uh, from their road paver uh, to do what we consider the the looped road portion of it. Uh, they had a cost of nine thousand three hundred eighty-seven dollars uh, for that road. This is for slurry seeing the road. This is also to do some repair work. Uh, there's an area where you have a tree root intrusion on the road there that that needs to be cut out and that needs to be patched up. So if we take the districts. 50-50 uh, split of that there, that would be a cost of about $4,693.50 uh, to the district. About. So we think we can handle that there just fine. Uh, so we plan to move ahead with that part. Item three is on the brush maintenance activities. And this is for doing some brush abate abatement on the sides of that road. The road itself here, uh, it's in pretty good condition, but there are some areas where you have a little bit of vegetation that is encroaching onto the road and onto the, the drainage facilities alongside of the road. Uh, talked with our uh, construction staff. Uh, we don't see an issue doing a one-time brush abatement activity. Uh, there we go. So this is the, I'm talking about the red highlighted looped road there. So we feel we can do this. We, the only thing we can't do is we, we can't commit to a, an ex, exact time at the moment. Uh, our crews, we typically use a California Department of Forestry fire crews there and with the wildfires, they're, 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 they're kind of saturated with work at the moment there. Yeah. So this will be kind of a, an area where when we can get to it, we'll get to it. We do plan on doing this there in 2019 at some point. The only thing that we don't want to commit to is doing this on an annual basis. Uh, we have a lot of easements. Uh, we have a lot of property that require our crew. And so uh, this will kind of be an area that we'll just, we'll have on the list. And, you know, when the work is needed, uh, then we can bring, bring that back up at that point. And then item four here was on the maintenance and repair of that northern access gate there, which is on the northern portion of the Emerald Heights property. And uh, I think uh, after explaining this in last meeting, uh, Mr. Cannon here, uh, he agreed to drop that portion of the request. So with that said, I'm gonna go back to item one, uh, which is reducing the Emerald Heights HOA's irrigation costs. So what uh, Mr. Michael Arthur of our staff has done is he's come up with a little bit of a cost analysis and he discovered that swapping four one and a half inch meters with four of their two inch meters. This is all their existing meters, by the way. We're not talking about adding or subtracting any meters. We're just doing a swap. By doing this here, uh, we're getting a lot of their water use out of tier three, and we're probably saving right about $20,000 a year uh, in, in tier three costs by doing this. Uh, to perform the work, I got a cost quote from our construction operations personnel. Uh, we have eight meters total. Uh, it, 
I got the quotes and they, they come into about, about $2,500 per meter to do the swaps. Uh, we do have two of those eight meters where the service lines aren't sized properly. They're one and a half inch service lines existing. And to really bring these up to code there for a two inch meter, those service lines should be two inches as well. So we knocked around a, a couple alternatives for, for kind of how to address that because it is a large portion of the approximately uh, $36,000 500 quote that I got uh, from our construction crew to perform all this work. Uh, if we knock out the portion with the service lines, and, and one way of doing this here would be perhaps uh, we could leave the lines in place with an agreement with the association to uh, agree to foot the bill if we have a break on one of those lines in the future. If we do that, that $36,500 number comes back down to about 19600 so it almost cuts that number in half uh, for the bill. Uh, and as you see here from the staff report, a significant portion of that $19,000 over 11,000 of that, that's, that's in district labor and overhead. So the cost to do this work here, it's, uh, it, it is significant here. We're talking nearly $20,000 worth of work. Uh, staff isn't excited about eating that cost there, but that is one uh, thing that we were wanting to talk to the board about. And uh, that kind of concludes my report here. So uh, staff's uh, looking for direction on the meter exchange item here. I'd love to answer any questions you may have. Uh, I do happen to have a uh, public uh, speaker on this, and I'm wondering if we should hear that first. Sure. Uh, let's hear the public speaker uh, on 2.1. Who is it? Uh, surprisingly enough, it's Mr. Mm -hmm. Hutsacker. Oh. <laughs> Mike Hensley here, 115 Question Court, speaking as a representative president of the Twin Oaks Valley Property Owners Association. We are very concerned about fire. As near as I've been able to determine, we haven't had a fire in the Twin Oaks area and a lot of the other nearby areas for something like 50 years. We have a big amount of brush that has been building up. I think the district staff would be well advised to start a program to do more aggressive brush clearance in the coming years. This is a problem that's only going to get worse with the drought. And we've already seen problems, what happens with wildfires. Thank you. Very good. Yes, Director. Mr. President, can I, can I speak? Oh, yes, but please uh, fill out a speaker slip. Come on up. Uh, please fill out a speaker slip when you're done. Okay. First off, we want to thank, you, thank uh, staff for doing all the work they have done at your request uh, this le over this last couple of weeks. Uh, we do agree that uh, we're happy to, to see that we're going to be partners as far as the slurry seal and the road maintenance. I think that works out great. I think the uh, brush clearing along the road, I mean, it protects us. I mean, if, uh, as far as vehicles going up and down and you know, as far as just fire, I mean, we, we get concerned with, you know, I'll say large utility trucks using the road. So this resolves that issue and we, we appreciate that. Uh, we just like it done before June, before fire season. I think that'd be our, our, our biggest request on that issue. Uh, as far as the water meter swap, um, we had, we had a lot of discussions. I mean, I probably have been involved in about six meetings with, uh, with the water district over this past six months. And um, swapping the meters used to be something that the district did at no cost. And, uh, and then uh, I think when, when uh, we ended up in the tier three pricing, it ended up that uh, the district says, well, maybe we better maybe look at this. And, but it's still, they still were still doing that type of work until I guess we asked and then all of a sudden this became something a little more significant. Uh, we, we're, we're requesting that, uh, and we were also told by, that if we didn't have to replace the lines in the road, that, uh, that the district would do this at their cost. And we thought that was very generous. We didn't know what, what the outcome was gonna be until just recently. So we're kind of hoping it still will be at, at your cost and if, uh, or some type of negotiated uh, 
some type of discussion tonight. And uh, with all that, we do appreciate all the work that uh, the staff has done. You, the, you guys listening to us over this past uh, this past two or three meetings. And with that, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you. Do fill out a speaker slip in the very back, the yellow tags yeah. back there. Thank you. Director Martin. The question of staff was just brought up that we used to do this for free. Is that what the gentleman just told me? And where would that information come from? And uh, tell us. What, what's some of the historical uh, I'm not aware of a program where, where we would swap meters for free. The complexity in this particular issue is that the meter, when you swap the meters, they just don't fit. So you have to do a lot of piping and a lot of other changes. If we were taking out a one and a half inch meter and replacing it with a new one and a half inch meter, that's easy. Staff would do something like that. It's the complexity involved with the changing of meter sizes in the existing configurations. And that's, that's, that, that might be what uh, Mr. Cannon uh, was thinking of here. Uh, I don't want to speak for him, but if it is a like-to-like -like size here, much, much easier. In this case here, if we're you know, going up or going down size, uh, there's material differences. You know, you've got the ball valve adapters. Uh, but one of the biggest costs in this is labor. Uh, he needs a crew of three, basically, and this, th we're talking about half a day's worth of work here. That, that's about $1,500. Very good. Per meter. Yeah. Correct, per meter. Thank you. So you may also notice, uh, assuming we don't do the service, la the service lines themselves, and we're looking at the smaller amount, the $19,000, uh, Rob mentioned that about a little over 11000 is for district labor. That leaves about $8,300 that we're actually putting out hard dollars to go buy materials and supplies and things like that. Mm -hmm. The staff labor is kind of different because it's, it's money that's already in the budget. It's just a matter of what, where we're assigning the crews, what work to do. But the $8,300 would be money that we'd have to spend out of the district budget. Yes? And does the uh, dollar amount you have here include a contingency? <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, this does include a uh, approximately a 15% contingency, uh, which our uh, construction supervisor puts on all of his quotes here. And what about if you get in there, you start working, and you hit a geyser that you didn't know was there? Who pays for that? Then, then there's going to be additional work. Um, yeah, and. It, who, who pays for that there? Most likely, I would imagine that'd be the district if we hit something accidentally, if that's what you're asking, Director Martin. Well, there's something not there. I'm um, just doing whatever. I mean, contingency to me is, I honestly thought we were doing a big favor by doing it at our cost uh, to get it done. We've never done that before. Um, I don't know what it would cost them out in the outside world. I don't think you have any idea either. Or maybe you do. If they were to go outside to get this done, what it would cost them. Versus us doing it, I don't know. Yeah, so if we, if for instance, uh, the crew goes out there and it takes longer than they projected to do that there, they're they're going to they're going to actually we would actually bill on actual costs there, okay. unless there was you know just a, a big fib there and we missed it there, then obviously I'd expect the district to be eating that cost at that point. My recommendation to the board is, if the board were to consider cost sharing in this item, is to put a not to exceed amount. We would contribute a certain amount of labor or materials, dollars, however you want to look at it, but not to exceed a certain amount. So in the event that we run over a 15% contingency, it's not all in the district. Yeah. That sounds correct. Anything, the director? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, well, what, what's, what's, what sounds fair to me is cost sharing on this as well with, with, uh, with the association. I, you know, anything on, on the district is, is a subsidy from the rest of the rate payers. And, um, you know, to me, upsizing a service, um, you know, the, the cost of doing that should be borne by the, uh, the, the uh, account holder. So I, I'm, not, I'm not in favor of footing the bill on this. I, I'd be willing to entertain some kind of cost sharing on this, just like we're doing on the road maintenance. But... Uh, Director Snell. Yeah, first off, I just want to, I'm glad that uh, the HOA and staff, thank you staff for uh, for working with them and finding some solutions for um, at least three of the four. 
I, I share Director Ellitharp's concerns, and, and a couple other points to that is, you know, I think I think this might be a little bit of a slippery slope. I've already heard from another HOA even prior to this matter coming um, with a similar concern. So I think if we do do whatever we end up doing here, it's probably not going to remain a secret. It's on TV. <laughs> you know, we're probably going to have another HOA and another HOA and another HOA uh, coming probably every single meeting we have until we've hit them all. Um, so I'm concerned about that because I think it could, it could turn into a, a much bigger uh, cost for the district. And when we talk about you know our cost, we don't. We, it's not our cost. It's still their cost. It's everybody. It's all of the ratepayers' cost. We don't. We don't have anybody else's money except for theirs. Uh, so I do agree that if we do do this, it would be uh, putting kind of an unfair burden, and, and there'd be a subsidy from the rest of the ratepayers just for one HOA. And then we are looking at what I would what I would think a very good likelihood that we're going to end up having a lot more HOAs coming. Uh, so I, I just I, I don't think I can support that right now. Sorry. If I may, just to stress a point that Rob made, if the HOA was expected to pick up 100 percent of the cost, that's about twenty thousand dollars. This will save them about twenty thousand dollars annually. So it's a one year payback on their investment, and every year after that, they'll be benefiting about $20,000, depending on water rates and water consumption. Uh, Director Evans? Thank you. Actually, that's what I wanted to clarify. So right now, if we do nothing and they continue as it is, it's costing them approximately $20,000 a year in the rate three, tier three, assuming they were to never go up again. Or... Yeah, correct. It's twenty thousand dollars more than they would pay if we change the meters for them, and they use the same amount of water at the same price. So it has been costing them twenty thousand a year, as it is. As of January first. Well, I, 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 I feel really badly about this situation, but I have to say I do think we're setting a precedent based on this and I might be willing to consider a cost share but when it's going to be able to be a benefit to you of the same amount of money year after year after year it's very hard for me to um, explain to another ratepayer why we did that for Emerald Heights and not for someone else I think that's a very interesting point um, so I don't know that I could I certainly couldn't support paying the whole thing Yes, come on up. Don't forget to sign a speaker slip. Thank you. Uh, my name is John I'm a resident, a homeowner in Emerald Heights. Uh, in 2010, 2011, uh, I came here. Uh, in 2011, I was the president of the board. And we, we met with engineering, and they had a report because some of the concern tonight is it, what happened, we start working on this and we're gonna have more issues. It, it's possible, but there's a report already made, um, when, uh, I think it was in February 2011, where it, it goes into more detail. Perhaps before you guys say no tonight, perhaps you should look at that report to see if that will help the cost, uh, to, for sharing the cost. Thank, Thank you so much. Don't forget to fill out a slap. Director Martin? Yeah, I, I'm going to concur with everyone up here. Uh, I think that the staff did a great job. Thank you for solving three of the four problems. And the other problem comes up to real money. Uh, the other two, two of them did as well. And thank you for getting the brush cleared. I'm guessing the brush can't be that bad or our guys would have told us it's that bad. But it's something that they have. And the slurry, I think we're going above and beyond. Um, I, I think they have to pay cost. I, I don't know how we could have everyone in the district have to pay to do this for them, and you're opening up a really serious door there for everyone who has a problem to say, hey, switch out my water meter for free. You just can't do it. Someone has to pay for it. And I think doing it at a cost is a, is a great way of doing it, especially since one year you've gotten back your savings, and after that you're, you're plus every, every year. I mean, it just... Yeah, we had to ask. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't mind you asking. I just, yeah. There's nothing wrong with asking. But I have one more, one more suggestion. Can we 
do we, so we go suddenly go with the $20,000 or the $19,000 payback over a year. Can we prorate this over a two year period, just add it to our water bills? Would that be something we can do, Glenn? Mm -hmm. Or Lloyd? Um, again, you're, uh, in my opinion, uh, you're opening up a, 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 a door there that we're not a bank and, and we couldn't afford to do that if 10 other HOAs show up, <laughs> which could happen. Uh, so in my opinion, no, uh, but maybe we could have you pay it over a year. I don't know if that's possible, but I certainly wouldn't go any further than that. He said, we're not a bank. Uh, um, yeah, and, and you're right. And uh, I just have to bring up that today as I watch the proceedings of our, our national hero, um, uh, they once said when he was on the campaign trail, he shook the hand of a mannequin. And someone said, did you know you were shaking a mannequin's hand? He goes, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, you had to ask, and, and I'm glad we were able to accommodate most of it. I think, I think from my perspective, this one we need to stick with. You need to pay uh, for our costs, whatever they may be, because uh, once you start digging in holes, you never know what you find. So uh, you want to put that in the form of a motion, sir? Yes. So I, I move that uh, um, we agree with staff on the three conditions that they agreed to take care of, and the fourth condition is that uh, they must pay uh, the $20,000 or whatever that number is uh, for us to uh, perform the work for them, which is saving them quite a bit already from what it would cost them to do themselves. And do you want to extend that over a year's period? You mentioned that. We could we could do that. I check with our finance okay. manager. It's something we could accommodate. If we could do that, let's extend it over a year. 12, 12 payments. Very good. Starting with January. All right. Uh, second I'll to second that. Second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Very good. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Item two point no, two point two. Um, the annual report. And, I know uh, financial report. Financial report, that's correct. Audit report, thank you. And I actually have a uh, public speaker before we get the report, so if... Uh, okay, very good. I'm accommodating today because it's my last day. <laughs> yeah, so, you are. So <laughs> you can take it up with a big guy. Uh, all right. 2.2. .2. So we'll need just a minute to bring thank up you. the next presentation. Okay, very good. Take your time. Oh, the by end. the way, would staff let us know what they've decided to do when they decide to do it? Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, we'll, we'll get in touch with them tomorrow and find out what how Thanks they want to move forward. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> you. I'm sorry. You can go ahead and introduce. Good evening, President Hernandez, members of the board. Tonight we have a special speaker. That's Jennifer Fire from Davis Fire is here. She's a partner with the firm, and she's one of our new auditors, and she'll be presenting the audited financial statements, and then I'll follow up with my exciting presentation afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I hope there's popcorn. <laughs> Good evening, directors. Thank you for having me here today. As Wes mentioned, I'm the partner on your audit, and this is our first year performing your audit, and I have a short presentation to go over the audit results and highlight some of the audit procedures that we performed this year. As part of our audit, we issue three reports. There we go. We issue three reports. Um, one of them is the audit opinion on the basic financial statements. The financial statements are prepared by staff, and we are responsible for producing an opinion that tells you whether or not the financial statements are correct. Our opinion states that the financial statements were accurate in all material respects in accordance with government accounting standards. So we issued an unmodified opinion, which is the highest level of opinion that you can receive. In our audit opinion, we mention three exciting facts for you. One of them is the implementation of a new standard that changed the way that you account for other post-employment benefit liabilities. And that statement resulted in a prior year restatement of your financial statements of 1.7 million and changed 
some of the footnote and added some additional disclosures on that liability. We also documented in our opinion that you, you early implemented a new standard that eliminates the accounting for capitalized interest on, on capital projects. So if you incur debt on a project, you'll no longer be including that interest expense on the debt as a part of the project cost. And lastly, the, the opinion mentions that there's another prior period adjustment uh, related to moving a project from construction and progress into a completed stage so the depreciation can start. The other two letters, one of them is just a standard letter to you to communicate the auditor's required communications. And then we have an opinion on your compliance with government auditing standards that goes over our internal control recommendations as well. We were pleased with staff's readiness for the audit. Of, as a first year auditor, you can assume that we asked them questions that they hadn't been asked in a long time. And um, I think staff would tell you that we were very thorough with our uh, inquiries and they responded in a transparent manner uh, with us and we, we had maximum communication, which we appreciate. We, were, we had no material audit adjustments detected as a result of our audit, so you can feel pretty comfortable with the underlying accounting records that are kept here on a day-to-day -day basis. And as a kind of a byproduct of having new auditors, we look at the internal control processes over the, the key accounting cycles, and we did have some observations um, for continued improvement in internal controls. Overall, the internal controls are very strong. And we felt that there was a good segregation of duties between the accounting functions. So the, the first two issues are really um, system type issues, you know, ways that you can have your system continue to support the good internal controls of the district. And then the last one, anytime there's a prior period adjustment, we're always just kind of required to say that there, um, there was something that was missed in the past and to pay attention to that in the future. Do you have any questions about the internal controls before I move on? No. Nope. Uh, I, yes. Oh, yes. Just a quick one. When I was reading through it on the, um, the adding new vendors, this would be for our finance people. Were you surprised at her question and discovering that? That, or is it never been an issue before? It sounded kind of, you know, we do all so many things about designating who can do what. I had no idea that was even in there, but. Actually, no, we weren't surprised, and it was, it was more impressed that they observed it and recommended it because it is a good, uh, an area for improvement. And with our excellent and, uh, Growing IT, I want to say growing. We have a staff of four in IT now. Um, our financial system, because of we only had a staff of three in the accounting department and a previous staff of two in the IT department, um, pretty much everybody had access to everything in the financial system. We have compensating controls in other areas, but in the financial system, if since we're only three people doing it, everybody had to have access to everything. Now with a staff of for an accounting, the IT department, they're looking at the, the abilities of the system to see how, if we can change those controls so that only two people can enter vendors and two people can't and so on and so forth to make up. Although there are competent controls in place, so there's no control issue, it is a good uh, recommendation for improvement and we're more impressed than surprised. Oh, well, I'm, I'm impressed too. And when I read it, I thought, wow, such a little detail. Mm -hmm. Um, like you said, it's not been a problem, but it's an opportunity to have one. So, great. I'm glad you were impressed and not surprised. Thank you. So, as part of the audit performed under government auditing standards, we're required to look at certain laws and regulations that we believe are material and direct to the financial statements. I've included a list of some of those laws that we looked at for your audit. And you know, for example, we picked a sample, a, a random sample of 40 expense transactions or wires, and we evaluated um, adherence to the district's purchasing policy and had no issues uh, with that testing. So we, in fact, with all the compliance testing that we performed, we had no instances of non-compliance to report to you. So that's good. 
just get to give you a little bit of flavor. This is my last slide, I believe. A little flavor of what we do during the audit. And you know, each year when we meet with you, we'll kind of tell you what we did differently because the audit is something that changes based on what's going on at the organization. This year, obviously, first year auditor, we looked at internal controls of kind of the high levels. In the future, we'll dig down a little deeper and look at things like employee expense reports or um, petty cash or things that are a little, little more in the weeds as we move forward. We used a, our certified information systems auditor, who's a specialist, is a lot smarter than I am when it comes to uh, IT, to evaluate the information systems. And again, they were very strong. It was just a, a, a minor um, improvement uh, that he had recommended. We spent a lot of time looking at the other post-employment benefit liabilities this year with the change in the new standard that involved looking at your new actuarial valuation, your funding policies, and making sure we have all the proper uh, disclosures. That liability on the financial statements is actually a, a one year behind because of the way of the reporting requirements. So the liability in your June 30, 18 financial statements is actually measured as of June 30, 17. And that liability was 1.9 million. And then subsequently, you funded the OPEB liability. And so we would expect next year that that balance is going to be zero or close to zero. We also look at your pension obligations in a similar way, reviewing the actuarial's valuation and testing the underlying information supporting those calculations. The, the pension liability is 17.8 million in your financial statements, and it's 75% funded, which is pretty consistent amongst um, CalPERS uh, pension plans in California. I mentioned uh, cash disbursements testing uh, that we did that we had no problems with. And then we also selected a random sample of 40 customer bills and we tested whether or not all, every single charge on there was correct in accordance with uh, the rates that are set and also looked at the information about usage and recalculated them to make sure that the system was calculating those bills correctly. We like to do that on a first year audit just to make sure that you know, you rely on your system. We, we're kind of more of a trust but verify type of service. So we make sure that, um, that it's actually working and happy to report that there was no errors with that testing. And then big picture, pretty much every big asset or liability on your financial statements, we've confirmed or done additional testing on. We do a number of, of procedures. It takes about 300 hours to do your audit. Um, we have a team of, you know, at, at times um, about five people involved um, in this process. So it's a big process, and as long as it takes us to do it, you can imagine how uh, painful it is on uh, staff having to having to live through it. Um, so overall, a very good audit, and I believe you have a presentation on the financial statements, but this is the audit results for you. Questions? Yes. Not, not a question. I just um, being on the finance committee. Just, I've been involved with our audits over the last I don't know, four or five years, and this this seems to me to be the third firm that um, we've worked with over that time. And I, I just got to say that um, I, I I thought this has been the best firm that we've worked with so far. Um, at least I have as, as a, being part of the uh, the finance committee. Um, very thorough, and also it's the first time that I've seen our utility billing. Um, testing tested and I don't know maybe it was done by the other firms I'm not sure but they certainly didn't talk about it so I'm glad that you brought that to our attention because that is something as board members that we're all um, you know want to make sure that we're building accurately so thank you and great job thank you did you have a question the director Martin? I just have something to say uh, as Mike being the other part of the finance committee for the last few years um, <clears throat> Uh, boy, when it started out, we <laughs> it was a lot different than it is today. We've gotten better and better, and, and this firm, I feel, has done an excellent job at asking the questions uh, and answering the questions uh, to my satisfaction, because I'm not a finance person. And uh, I just say congratulations, job well done. Wes, job well done. And I know they found a lot of little things, and I know they had you going crazy. But that's what the board likes. <laughs> so, 
Uh, good job. Thank you. Very good. I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wes, you're up. Can we make a motion? Uh, I think we have a presentation. I know. I know. I'm kidding. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to uh, acknowledge before I start our new accounting supervisor, Anthony Glenn. Um, <clears throat> he's not here tonight, but he actually spent a lot of time with the auditors and did an excellent job this year. So. Just want to say thanks. So, as Ms. Fire mentioned, the financial statements are the responsibility of management. And that being said, staff has worked diligently in recording transactions and preparing the financial statements to ensure that they're accurate, complete, and fairly presented. So, tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about our annual financial report. The annual financial report consists of the independent auditor's report the management's discussion analysis, uh, the financial statements, which are made up of the statements in that position, statements of revenues, expenses, and changes in that position, and the statement of cash flows. Statement, the financial statements are followed by the notes to the financial statements, and after that, are the, the supplementary information, which is the required supplementary information, as well as some additional supplementary information that we prepare ourselves. So tonight I'm going to focus on the management discussion analysis um, because it serves as a summary of the financial statements. It points out some financial highlights and also gives us a chance to brag about our accomplishments during the year. And uh, as with most of my presentations, I'm going to talk a lot about numbers. So I'll, I'll try to make it as interesting as possible because we are we're proud of these numbers. So I'll do my best. Um, all the slides I'm presenting tonight are going to be on pages 4 through 11 of your annual financial report, which I believe you have a copy of so you can follow along as I go, and I'll refer to the pages for your, for your reference. Some financial highlights for 2018. <coughs> Water sales increased by $6.2 million as a result of increase in demands and uh, rate increases that went into effect January 1st, 2018. Water purchases increased by $3.3 million in, in response to the, the increase in demand. Unfortunately, water costs still exceed water sales. The district collected $6.4 million in revenues from uh, developers during their capacity fees. And we expended $3.8 million in capital asset acquisitions during the year. And these two numbers are very comparable to last year. It kind of reflects the, uh, the steady construction over the last two years. So um, this slide shows the changes in net position for 2018 and some of the financial highlights from that. And in 2018, the operating revenues exceeded operating expenses by $0.5 million and total net position increased by $11 million after capital contributions of $9.7 million. Some other financial highlights in 2018, the district paid down $3 million in long-term debt while incurring no additional debt. We fully funded our other post-employment benefits, which will result in a significant interest savings to the district. And as Jennifer mentioned, we implemented GASB 75 and early implemented GASB 89. GASB 75 is the other post-employment benefit GASB, and GASB 89 is the one that refers to the uh, capital, capitalized interest. The next few slides are going to be a comparison of current year to prior year. And this is on page six of your annual financial report. As you can see here, cash and investments increased by $8.2 million from 2017 to 2018. Capital assets decreased by $1.6 million as a result of depreciation and excess of capital additions. Other assets decreased by $0.5 million as a result of decrease in cap fee receivable and, the, and paying off the note receivable to the city of San Marcos. Deferred outflows increased by $3.3 million as a result of the payments to OPEB, which show up as a deferred outflow because we paid them, but they haven't, haven't yet been reflected in that liability, so they show up as a, a sort of an asset called deferred outflows. Current liabilities increased by $0.7 million as a, as a result of increase in payables for water purchases and, and connection fees. And non-current liabilities increased by $0.6 million as a result of the increase in the net pension liability and recording the uh, other post-employment benefit obligation, the OPEP. And finally, deferred inflows increased by $0.2 <coughs> million as a result of changes in actuarial assumptions as calculated by CalPERS. 
So the next two slides are going to be page eight of your uh, annual report. And I broke it out into two slides just to make it a little more presentable. This slide shows the revenues for the year. And as you can see, our major sources of revenue are water sales at 42%, sewer service charges at 26%, and ready to serve at 20%. And these percentages are comparable to prior years. Other items worth noting, uh, sewer service charges increased by $0.5 million as a result of increased flows and connections. Property taxes increased by $0.3 million as a result of the receipts from the redevelopment agencies. And other revenues increased by $0.3 million as a result of the increases in the pumping cost recovery. This page is the bottom half of page 8 of your financial report, and this shows the expense portion. As you can see here, GNA increased by $0.3 million as a result of less labor being charged to projects. Metal art decreased by $0.2 million as a, less, as a result of less materials being purchased and less outside services during the year. Engineering increased by $0.5 million as a result of a reclaimed water study that was completed in 2018. And transmission and distribution decreased by $0.2 million as a result of less main breaks in 2018 than in 2017. As you know, we had a lot of main breaks in 2017, so they came down this year. We'll probably come back up in 2019 again, though. So, continuing on page 9 and 10, the MDNA talks about some restrictions, commitments, and limitations of the district, such as the district has $59.5 million in outstanding debt as of June 30, 2018, and we are contractually obligated to certain capital projects, at least through the design phase, such as the San Marcos Interceptor, Metal Arc Tank Number 3, the Mount Bell Pump Station, the Rock Spring Sewer Replacement, the Chlorine Contact Tank Expansion, and the money, money on gravity outfall. This next slide shows some significant additions to capital assets during the year, such as we had sewer mains, manholes, and cleanouts of $15.1 million. That was a result of the capitalization of the San Marcos Interceptor phases uh, pipe burst, phase one and phase 1A. Uh, the water main sewer service lines of $3.1 million. Buildings and improvements of $0.5 million. Sewer vehicles and equipment of 0.2 million, and water vehicles and equipment of 0.1 million. Finally, we talk about some economic factors that were considered in preparing our FY19 budget. And Jennifer mentioned a couple of these, but uh, <coughs> one of them is the increased water usage as the district moves further from drought restrictions. Our cost of service and rate structure study that was completed and adopted by the board in June of 2017. Uh, the slow but steady recovery in construction, and our increasing regulatory compliance. And that completes my presentation for today. I kept it kind of short and sweet. I hope I didn't go too fast, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Questions? <coughs> questions? Yeah. No, I, I just have a comment. And um, as the audit report was well presented and looked very thorough, this was a wonderful report. It's really nice to have you stand up and say you are really proud of your results, of our results. Um, that's exciting. And I have no questions because I'm sure it would be so small compared to what you already know. You just did a beautiful, thorough job. Thank you to the entire. Thank you. Very good. I do have uh, one speaker, uh, Mike Hutsecker. Uh, some quibbles, minor quibbles, and some major issues. Um, page 32, there was a mention of LIBOR. LIBOR is part of our debt. I know that that is changing because of the mess in the UK and the U uh, European Union. So they're putting something other than LIBOR in. Uh, pension liability, I believe there's going to be a big change and upgrade in January 1st. Uh, I would prefer a little forward looking statement in that regard. Um, I'm a little worried about the unrated uh, securities because uh, some of the commercial paper and repros were what really caused the bank failures of 2008. And uh, I did not see any discussion on capacity fees and our deficit in uh, 
those accounts, nor do I see any real information on impact fees anywhere. My biggest concern concerns the sale of water capacity. I checked out one particular development, which was Mark saying, San Marcos, previously known as uh, De Villa Village Apartments. They have 416 apartments. According to the facility fees, they should have paid uh, for uh, 42 inch meters. Well, they put in 11. So how is that appropriate? How does that fit financially? The other question is that under law passed in 2016, now 2018, uh, submetering can be done. And the owner of the property only pays one capacity fee. So who pays for these new meters? And who is, have they been paying the true tier three water rates over the last couple of years and how many submeters have been attached and how many have been charged to the consumer. And that's it. Very good. Entertain a motion to approve the uh, auditor's report? Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Before we go on to uh, 2.3, I would like to take an opportunity to uh, thank the board for this last year. Uh, we've had a wonderful time. Your support and help and guidance and uh, uh, Diane making sure that I'm on the right track all the time. I really appreciate it. Staff, we've said it. I hope it goes all these managers right down to the newest employee. We have the mag most magnificent staff in the county and probably the state. And I want to thank each and every one of you. Pass it back to your staff members. How wonderful. I, I see them driving around, and I don't see anybody sleeping under a tree or, you know, <laughs> whatever the crazy things we've heard before. Um, our general manager, our new council, thank you so much for all your help. I appreciate it. And with that... We're moving on to 2.3, and I'm moving over. The transition. All right, I, I guess I can tee that up a little bit. So Ordinance 203 does require that every year we reorganize the board and its officers, so that includes the position of president and vice president. The ordinance doesn't say how to do it, but it just says you shall do it every year. Um, so the district policy or practice has been to kind of do a rotation, and page 102 in the board packet shows the positions of president and vice president over the last six years, if that's any guide. So, very good. Oh, I have to make a motion. So oh, I, have to make we, a motion. I think we, we turn on some music and we all kind of run around the oh, chairs, good. and then when it stops, we sit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I make that motion. No wonder I'm going to be thrown off. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I would make a motion of to uh, uh, for the vice president and the president for the next year. And who is that? I would make a motion that Director Martin be the president, and uh, I believe Director Evans was the vice president. I'll second that motion. Oh, very good. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Now can I now move? We now we get to move. Okay. And did you, uh, Hal, did you want to present something to the I party president? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't want to make you get up, sit, and get back up. No. So. There you go. <laughs> Just stay standing. I'll stay standing. Stay standing. Okay. Do you want? Do you guys want to come down here for a picture, or do you want I'll to stay down back there? For a photo, in a better light here. We just paid half a million dollars for getting good light up here. It's good light down here. Yeah, we have plenty of light. Okay, Whatever you want to we'll do go down the there. Come to the light. <laughs> we'll go down there. All of us need to go down there. Oh, one go, one go, we all go. One go, we all go. We all go. All right, come on, everybody down. Thanks, Matthias. Jim, on behalf of the entire district, all of you, we'd like to present you with this book of all your accomplishments. <laughs> 
Oh, well, very <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're doing in the US, I guess. But the printing's very small. Oh, yeah, I get it. And uh, there's a lot of pictures. Not a lot of pictures. Oh, yeah, look at that. Uh -huh. I want to present you with that as a thank you from your board. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yes. Thank you all very much, and as I say, didn't thank you for all the help. Didn't you see the print? Got, 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 got it all. And then share it with us, because I want to remember the stories. Well, I can't remember. I know you'll be reading through it. CRS. Thank Jim, did you leave what I asked you to leave here? I'm sorry? Did you? I, yeah. Right there. Or did I take it with me? <laughs> I think you took it with you. I thought I left it there. It's all marked up with pen. Look uh, underneath the... Yeah, no, right there to your left. That's it. Oh, it's not the cheat sheet, though. Oh, the there sheet. it is. I got it. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that vote of confidence. I will strive to do my absolute best at being your new board president for the year. Uh, and with that, I passed out for your perusal, but I think I spoke to most of you, uh, the board member appointments. Um, almost all of them stayed the same. The one large one that changed, uh, which I really have to thank uh, Director Ella Tharp for, uh, was uh, we talked about Iwa, and uh, he was more than happy to give me the opportunity to learn something over there. <laughs> so uh, I made the switch with him, but it was only upon his, his authorizing it. And all the other switches were kind of minor, uh, as everyone had an opportunity to look at them, because if so, I need a motion and a second. And because we have a lot of duplication going on here from year to year, we need uh, a 5 0 vote uh, on this whole thing. I'll, I'll move to approve the board member appointments as presented by the president. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. 5-0. Well, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to a very productive year. We have, a, as we just mentioned by uh, Jim, we have a great staff. Um, really, uh, platinum is not a good enough word to use for our staff and what they've been accomplishing uh, in the last bunch of years, and we'll continue to. Um, that also, we don't allow any retirements for the next three or four years, so people can't go anywhere if they're thinking about it. Um, okay, going to move on to uh, approval of general manager um, employment agreement. Okay, we need to approve the general manager's employment agreement, and for that, we have our council who's going to give us a, uh, the verbiage for it. Thank you. What's been put before you is a proposed first amended employment agreement for the general manager. Um, the significant financial terms of the agreement are as follows. The term of the proposed agreement is a four-year agreement, which would begin um, today, December 5th, upon your approval. Uh, the general manager's salary will increase by 3% upon execution of the first amended agreement. Uh, the general manager will be eligible for merit-based salary increases in conjunction with an annual performance evaluation of up to 3% of his salary per year. Uh, the general manager will remain eligible for the same cost of living adjustments as the other employees of the district receive. Uh, the general manager will be provided with a 40, 40 hours of executive leave per year. And finally, uh, the general manager will continue to receive benefits offered by the district at the same level as is offered to the other employees of the district. That's a summary of the financial, significant financial terms of the proposed First Amendment agreement for your consideration and approval. Thank you very much. A motion to approve? Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Amazing. Thank you very much. And with that vote of confidence, <laughs> we'll go to reports, the general manager's report.
Yeah, so you stole my thunder. I just did want to say thanks to the board for the vote of confidence. Four years, it's a nice commitment. I look forward to the next four years, and I agree with the statements that were made up here. We have an awesome staff here, and I think we're going to do great things over the next four years, so thank you. Uh, as far as our report out, the only thing I wanted to share is that the Department of Water Resources has released its initial state water project table A allocation, which basically means how much water do they think they can provide based on the request from the agencies that are contractors of the state water project. Uh, although it's raining outside today, the state did determine this a while ago, and they are only allocating 10%. So it's a fairly low start, but if the weather conditions continue to improve, they may increase that as, as time goes by. With that, that's all I had to report. Thank you. Do we have district legal counsel? Yeah, I, I just wanted to touch on one item. In 2017, the Supreme Court adopted what was known as the San Jose decision, which was a Public Records Act case. And what the court found is that um, public office, officials and employees' communications related to district business are public records, even if they're on their personal devices, et cetera. So uh, I don't know if the district has looked at that. It occurred before we were here. And so I, I would like to work with the general manager to assess that because it does create certain um, risks and restrictions relative to using personal devices uh, relative to the Public Records Act request and what we'd have to do in connection with our record retention policy. Thank one, you. One issue that's come up before at other agencies I've, I've heard from is that that doesn't necessarily, and I'll look to Jim to clarify this, just because you use a personal device for business doesn't mean that everything you do on that personal device is, is discoverable. It's just the items that are work-related. That's, That's correct. correct. Anything, anything on your personal device that is district-related business would be subject to the Public Records Act address, or Public Records Act. Yes. Question, Mr. Handis. And who determines, looks at my private device and looks <laughs> for uh, those particular items that are water-related uh, versus you know, love letters to a friend? Uh, it, it, it might be me, but uh, oh, now I am in trouble. Yeah, now you are in trouble. Um, <laughs> no, that 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 you you've touched on the crux of the issue is if if we got a request, we would have to request that either you or someone look at your phone to find out find any juristic related communications on the subject matter that's been requested. Okay. So very good. Okay, thank you, um, San Diego County Water Authority Director Evans. Um, nothing <clears throat> new to report. The meeting's tomorrow, and but I will say I think there's some really good news coming by the end of the year. Thank you. And I, I failed to mention it uh, earlier, but uh, your reappointment, you've been doing a fantastic job down there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Helen. the entire board, and we're glad to see you continue on. So thank you. Thank you all very much. I appreciate that. And Sina Wastewater Authority, Capital Improvement Committee. Uh, our... Uh, Committee meeting is next week. Okay. And now, are you going to be the president? I'm going to be the president of the board at, a month early, actually, starting next week, as what I was told is the existing president, Mark Muir, will not be showing up, so I'll be taking over a month early. Okay. Policy and Finance Committee. Yeah, Policy and Finance Committee met yesterday, December 4th. We considered uh, two items. Uh, one was a res resolution establishing the Board of Directors meeting dates for 2019, and the second item was the Fiscal Year 2018 Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. And what day is your meeting, Jim? Well, we can give that to me after. Yeah, they're generally uh, uh, Tuesday, uh, two weeks before the board meeting. Okay, Standing Committee uh, for Finance, my last report for the, the finance manager, because Mike will be the finance uh, chair. Um, is that we heard everything tonight that we heard at the finance meeting. We went through it a little more thoroughly, asked some more questions. Uh, Wes, uh, superb as always, answered them all, even with Muggsy. I'll get the name right someday. Chuggy. Oh, Chuggy. Chuggy. <laughs> even with Chuggy, uh, who has a seat now at the meetings, I understand. So, uh, directors, any, any other committees standing? No? Um, Director report on travel conference seminars, which we want to start on your end, Mr. Hernandez. Uh, yes, I attended the Aqua uh, conference uh, all week long. Uh, very productive, and uh, but and I won't steal anybody else's thunder. 
because uh, the one uh, breakout session that I did attend was regarding brackish water with the uh, Roblo company, a Swedish company that is working in Indian Wells Valley up by China Lake. They actually have their term, for lack of the correct terminology, a flying MRI machine hmm. that they can pass over helicopter uh, uh, connected large mass areas of, of property and based on the resistivity of the electronics going into the ground can determine the soil type, uh, the uh, rock type, whether it's water, brackish water, sand, whatever, and then they can put together a 3D model with which then the lay people can say, oh yeah, well, this is that and that is this. Um, they also have a smaller version that can be towed behind a vehicle for small areas. So um, you may be hearing about this in the future after we get our groundwater report because uh, this could give us a better idea of what's out there. And that was very, very beneficial. Hmm. Excellent. And they're in Sweden? Uh, yeah, I missed it by one year. They were taking junkets there. Now I might be able to go to China Lake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, do you have anything? <coughs> no? no? Um, Director Evans? Do you have anything? Um, yes, I was at Aqua as well. And since I know there's two more of you to report, rather than go into the sessions, I would like to say that this particular um, conference I felt was exceptional in the amount of networking that I was able to accomplish and the number of people that in a number of ways were able to connect with and talk with. And one that was very exciting and it's good um, also because of um, being on um, the Water Authority is that I was able to meet with and spend an evening with Gloria Davis who is replacing Randy Records and she's a wonderful woman. I know Craig has said he met her. So it's very exciting. And then I met Leticia, who's the secretary for MWD, um, as coming in. And that's kind of exciting because it was two women. It's the first women they've had as well. But it was nice to be able to sit with them for, you know, not just, it was just a, several hours of communicating. And then I had another good conference with um, Dave Ever Egerton, who's the new Aqua um, president or executive mm -hmm. officer, what's the word? And um, I, I felt that was the first time it was really time to do that. The, the conferences and seminars were great, but that was one of the best parts I found. I did meet a, a lot of different um, important people, not just the same old group. I really appreciate that. Okay, I, yes, I attended sir. the Aqua Conference as well, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Tuesday, I attended the Energy Committee and Water Quality Committee, of which I'm a member of both of those committees. Uh, Wednesday, I attended the energy program on the state's zero carbon goal and opportunities in the water sector, a joint attorney finance program on understanding infrastructure financing, and a finance program on pension and OPEB cost reduction and financing options. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, I attended an attorney's program on SB 998 water service shutoffs, um, all very interesting. Uh, programs. Will we be able to resist? Yes. <laughs> uh, I also <clears throat> attended Aqua, but probably just prior to Aqua was a JPIA meeting, uh, Joint Powers Insurance, and uh, very interesting. Um, I learned quite a lot, but uh, on the first day uh, we had a vote, uh, quite a few votes, most of them housekeeping, uh, but the one of them I, I talked to you before about it was creating a captive insurance company in Utah. And uh, they took a vote on it. First I heard it was a year ago, and uh, it was like 97% uh, of the people said yes to the captive. So they're creating a captive in Utah where we'll be putting some of our funds, which will be making more money than what they can make in California. And the captive is going to be made up of a board, uh, uh, a very small board, but uh, a board all the same. But they think that they can actually increase their earnings a few hundred thousand dollars a year, which would mean a lot. Um, and also last year, uh, the liability rates that we pay went down 9%. Um, 
there was a savings on the liability. Uh, on the property, there was a savings of 10%, 10% less than the year before. Uh, their PPO dental uh, stayed stagnant, stayed the same. And uh, that's about all from JPIA, except they had two. Gosh, I, I wish I had known these programs were going to be this good. That would have coerced you, everyone to go into it. But uh, uh, two, very good on Tuesday, training for board members, which they have never done before. And uh, I've done many trainings at Aqua, uh, different trainings they have, but usually by the same one or two people. And uh, these two were exceptional. And anybody that wants this information, I'll certainly give this to you. But uh, number one was moving from group to team and creating a cohesive board. And the other one was staying out of hot water, understanding your role as a board member. And both of these I've seen and heard before, but these had a lot of impact on me. They were just done differently, and uh, the presenters were excellent. Um, and I also, unless someone else wants to jump in, the CSDA, we had the dinner on the 15th. Do you remember that? No? Oh, yeah, we talked about it. Sorry. I'm, I'm going back in time instead of forward. Thank you. Um, and that is all that I had. Okay, other business. Cal Desal annual conference is coming up. And the information we have here. Okay. Uh, that's the one that's going to be out in... Uh, What's the date again? Okay, so it's, it's coming up, but it's not coming up. <laughs> it well, scared me there for a second. Well, it's on here coming up. <laughs> like, all right. Uh, director's comments, future agenda items. Anyone have comments or future agenda items? I have a comment. Yes, sir. I'd like to thank uh, Director Hernandez for his uh, service as president this past year. It was, it was great. Thank you. Great. Yeah, thank you. I echo that. Great job, Jim. Thank you. It's always fun sitting next to you. <laughs> Kind of missing you already. Uh, I have yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, it's interesting. Uh, I believe that the uh, opening of the board and the, the whole uh, a meeting is somewhat like a presentation. And I know our system is new, but um, the curtain needs to go up at five o'clock. And uh, if we have to do all this pre dinner figuring out how to turn it on and all that, that's what goes on before the hour that opens. So uh, I would hope in the future that when the 5 o'clock hour begins, all of the how the things work and if we've got programs that are in and out, that all that is accomplished. Thank you. Okay. And, uh, I'm just going to echo you. I, I, was, I was a little bit frustrated with that uh, earlier too. And uh, I know that we're not going to have the vendor with us you know, long term, but I would like to think on the nights that we have board meetings that the system kind of goes through a system check, maybe about 20, 30 minutes before uh, the curtain goes up, as uh, Director Hernandez said. Uh, we, anybody else? I, I have something, uh, just not to pile on, but it's, <laughs> it's time this thing starts to work. We paid good money for it, and uh, I don't want to pay another dime other than what we already contracted for. But I needed to work. I needed to tell us. By the way, while the last speaker was speaking, there was no second machine on here going because there was a picture on there. And maybe it doesn't go when there's a picture on there. I don't know. But there was no timer going off so to tell us how much time was there. We still don't know how to vote on it. Um, there's a lot that we just don't understand. And one problem I have is a lighter toned voice. Betty, you have a lovely voice. But the lighter toned voice when I sat there was hard for me to hear. The deeper tones I can hear, but I don't think it's my ears, but it could be. But we'll know if, if Jim has a problem in the future hearing what Betty's saying. What'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Would you like me to start over and repeat it? No, 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 no. I no. could. You have a beautiful voice. No, this is a, a system problem, not your problem. No. You speak I'll, lovely. I'll, but, I'll but, speak up. But I, I, Well, uh, we can't make a system for all of us that... So, you, I mean, it's it's a two-way street. So, thank you. I'll point okay. that out. I will say there's been times, if any of us move away, 
and speak softly. I mean, Craig can be soft. You can go into sort of a quiet thing. So I I'm think we all that. need to be aware. Of that. And that's true. Okay. But it certainly wasn't our finest hour, and we'll make sure we do uh, no. everything we can to have it run on a timely basis at the next meeting. Do, do we have a, a deadline on when this is supposed to be finished, or could we be here in 2022 going on? I think we're nearing the finish line, and then we're <laughs> going to have to do training. So that's one of the things. When we're done with all the improvements, staff's going to be trained, and then we'll do training for the board members, and then hopefully we're all good to go. We we'll start on time every time. Thank you. Yes, Director Evans. I was just going to say, if it's like anything electronic in my life, it will never end. It will never work per perfectly. And I think for all of us, what we've done and accomplished so far has been amazing. I, I'm amazed that anything has shown up, to be honest. So, I mean, it's frustrating. I agree very much so. But I think it's me. I jinx stuff. So. Okay, with that said, uh, move to adjourn? No. Second. Adjourn. Very good.